For most kids, standard antibiotic treatment proves effective, but not always. Christian Campbell just celebrated his first birthday. Already, he's had about nine ear infections. Lately, they've averaged one a month. When I first noticed there was a problem, he was tugging at his ears, digging in them, there was redness. And that's when I knew crying, just very uncomfortable. And it's not like Christian to, to be that way. It wasn't the norm for him. Antibiotic treatment became the norm. Very good. Very good. When he's on the antibiotic, he's a totally different child. Plays nice, eats well. But for Christian, the relief would prove only temporary. The infection kept coming back, so we were switching off to different antibiotics. Does that ear hurt? A lot of the problem we see now is that the parents are working and that they have to remain in work and therefore they want the child to return to school or daycare as quick as possible. So there has been an overusage of antibiotics for things that are not appropriate. Dr. George McCracken, professor of pediatrics at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, has seen an increase in resistance among the actual bacteria that causes middle ear infection. The two most common causes of acute otitis media in children are the pneumococcus and an organism called Haemophilus influenzae. And we know that in the developed world, these two organisms have become increasingly resistant to the common antibiotics. And this is a problem that has evolved because of the common and perhaps overuse of antibiotics in early infancy. These resistant strains are then passed along to other children, especially in daycare settings where many kids are together. While some cases of otitis media are viral, there are no simple diagnostic tests to rule out bacterial infection. So each year, more than 30 million prescriptions for antibiotics are given for ear infections alone. When standard therapies for otitis media fail, there are other options. For Christian, recurrent ear infections have made him a candidate for surgery. Surgical procedures that drain fluid from the middle ear are reserved for tough-to-treat cases. In one procedure, an incision is made, fluid is drained, and the hole is allowed to heal. For children with recurrent problems, small plastic tubes may be placed to allow for continual drainage. The tubes fall out on their own in 6 to 18 months. Can you go like that? While there are many treatments for ear infections, it's best to prevent them if possible. Good girl. And that brings us to our first Kids Health Works Q&A. How can parents help prevent ear infections? Let's start with breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, even for as little as three months, has been shown to prevent ear infections. That's because breast milk contains important antibodies and it encourages the optimal feeding position. Feeding position is important when bottle feeding too. When a child lies on his back while drinking a bottle, fluid can back up into the eustachian tubes and cause blockage. Try to keep the child in a slightly upright position. Downsizing daycare can help limit your child's exposure to colds and flus that can lead to ear infections. If your child is prone to ear infections, it may be good to choose a smaller group setting or one-on-one -on -one care. And doctors urge parents not to smoke. Smoking is an irritant. So an infant or a young child in the setting of an active smoker in the household has irritation of the upper respiratory tract mucosa and this is a clear predisposing event to middle ear infection. The pneumococcus is responsible for about 30 to 40 percent of ear infections. If we had an effective vaccine against pneumococcal infections, we would prevent many of those pneumococcal episodes. Vaccines can help in the battle against ear infections. A relatively new vaccine fights the pneumococcus bacteria, a common cause of ear infections. The key to this vaccine is that it's effective in children under age two. In a number of studies, it has been shown to decrease the number of ear infections. It's also effective against pneumonias, blood-borne infections, and meningitis. Additional vaccines are currently in development. One major benefit of preventing infection is that it limits the use of antibiotics. 
And if you can cut down on the use, you can cut down on the problem of antibiotic resistance.